Welcome viewers. Today we will be discussing on the topic model organisms used to study life sciences. Actually, model organisms can be divided into different categories. Number one comes bacteriophages, then comes bacteria and protists, then fungi, plants and animals. Precisely, we will be discussing about fungi as model organism in our today's discussion. So one of the most important pivotal discoveries in the field of life sciences that was contributed by fungi was the one gene, one enzyme concept, which was established while studying Neurospora crassa, a bread mold. Then comes the important names of yeasts, the unicellular fungi, Saccharomyces cerevisi and Cisosaccharomyces pombe. And now the list has become endless that fungi have helped us to understand the cell biology and to understand the genetics. We have understood the chromatin remodeling systems, we have understood cell cycle regulation, they have helped us to understand the important aspects, molecular aspects of transcription, translation and replication. Not only this, fungi, fungi helped us to understand the plant pathogenic interactions. They have contributed enormously in the field of medical sciences. Not only that, they are key players in industrial overproduction of various compounds. So to precisely enter into the study of model organism, fungi, we should classify them. So let's have a look on the classification which was established in the year 2007 by Webster and Weber. Therein you can see that the subkingdom true fungi Eumycota can be divided into phylum Chytriomycota, Zygomycota, Ascomycota and Basidiomycota. Then this Chytriomycota can further be divided as Chytriomycetus. Next, Zygomycota can be divided into Zygomycetus and Trichomycetus. Then we have got Ascomycota which comprises of many classes. To name few of them is Archaeoascomycetus, then Hemiascomycetus, then we have got Lichens and many more. Then in the group Basidiomycota we can see that the class comprises of Homobacidiomycetus, Gastriomycosetus and Osteomycetus and many more. So before starting our discussion, let's highlight on the few important characteristics of fungi. They are mostly eukaryotes and sometimes they may be unicellular, mostly they are multicellular. As I said, they being eukaryotes, they have got well-defined organelles, they have got nucleus and other organelles like mitochondria. Apart from this, fungi, most of them are filamentous, they have got hyphae and mycelia. Apart from this, most of them are achlorophilous, means they don't have chlorophyll. They have got chemoheterotrophic growth patterns. So, in case of fungi, we will see that they are having characteristics which are very much similar to the higher forms of eukaryotes and hence they can be used to establish the things or the pathways which are undergoing inside the higher forms of life. So we will be starting our journey with unicellular fungi and the name is called, example is yeast. So the first name that comes in our mind in the yeast community is Saccharomyces cerevisi. It is, belongs to the class Saccharomycetes. The order is Saccharomycetes and the family is Saccharomycetes and the genus Saccharomyces and species is cerevisi. What's so special about it? It's a single celled organism with a very short generation time. They are very easy to grow and can be grown in very well defined media and they are very easy to maintain under the lab conditions and the most important characteristic is that they are easily transformable means we can introduce foreign genes very easily inside this yeast. 
they can grow as haploid and hence simplifies the creation of gene knockout strains. These features are making it a suitable candidate as a model organism. It is also known as baker's yeast or budding yeast. As a eukaryote, it shares all the structures that should be present inside plants and animals and with a high percentage of non-coding DNA is absent here. That is something good about it as compared to other eukaryotes. It is a strong economic driver as a result of its established use in industry. It has been using, being used in industry enormously for overproduction of many metabolic compounds. It is used to study aging. It is used in the study of meiosis. It is used in the study of recombination and DNA repair mechanisms can be studied very nicely using Saccharomyces cerevisiae. The next important member of the yeast community is Schizosaccharomyces pombe. It belongs to the class Schizosaccharomyces order Schizosaccharomyces tails and the family is Schizosaccharomyces and the genus is Schizosaccharomyces and the species is Schizosaccharomyces pombe. It is a model which is used very well in molecular and cell biological studies. Now, why it is chosen as a model organism? Its rod shape itself facilitates the study of mechanism and kinetics of growth. URS Leopold was captivated by the four spored ascii of the fission yeasts S. Pombe. The linear arrangement of the four meiospores helps in studying the mechanism of meiosis very easily. Next, in 1970, Leopold's genetic tools and methods were merged and we studied the cell cycle regulation. We also understood reverse genetics with the help of this fission yeast. The sequencing of this fission yeast genome was done completely in the year 2002. It helps in cell cycle number two. It also helps in RNA interference studies. It helps to study the centromere structure and functions. It is important for studying the cellular response in DNA damage that is really very challenging. It also helps to study the processes of DNA replication. Community of molds. They are basically surviving in the soil. They can have their independent existence and sometimes they behave like multicellulars. So the first member in the mold community that is Ashbea gossipi. It belongs to the class Saccharomyces, order Saccharomycetales and family Saccharomycetaceae and the genus is Erymothaceum and the species is called Gossipi. The important features of Ashbea Gossipi are its small genome, its haploid nuclei and efficient gene targeting methods are available with respect to Ashbea Gossipi. It is basically a cotton pathogen and it is subject to genetic studies, mainly the polarity and cell cycle studies are being done using Ashbea gossipi. It is a model for long multinucleate fungal cells and it helps us in the better understanding of filamentous fungal growth and it helps us in developing novel fungicides. And high level of gene conservation or synteny between Ashbea gossipi and Saccharomyces cerevisiae has been seen. The next member of the mold community is Aspergillus nidulans. It belongs to the class Euteromycetes, order Euteroids, family Trichomycetes, and genus Aspergillus, and species Aspergillus nidulans. It is subject to genetic studies, particularly a useful model for organisms' studies of biology and cell regulation. Its life cycle goes through a haploid phase which contains many single nuclear spores which can be used to make crosses easily and repeatedly. The large number of spore production also enables more accurate and reliable quantification of cross offsprings. And Aspergillus nidulans can synthesize many of its essential compounds from a simple mix of water, salt and carbon sources. 
prototrophs make it a convenient subject to select strains which have a deficiency for a particular compound like vitamins or drugs. The conditions under which the fungus grows varies widely which makes it uh, possible to select conditional strains. And Aspergillus nidulus is basically used to study the genetics of tubulin and microtubulin. It helps us in the understanding of mitosis, action of kinasin and cytoplasmic dynenes. We have characterized the development of alcohol A regulatable promoter which is induced by alcohol and is repressed by glucose which is used as a useful tool to study the control of gene or study gene regulation. Next member of the mold community is Neurospora crassa. It belongs to the class Sordiomycetes order Sordiarelles, family Sordiaceae and genus Neurospora and species is Neurospora crassa. It is easy to grow and has a haploid life cycle which makes genetic analysis simple as recessive traits will show up in the offsprings. And it is also known as orange red mold and used in the genetic studies of meiosis, metabolic regulation and most important it is useful in the study of circadian rhythm. Neurospora crassa is used in the analysis of recombination methodologies, recombination that is going on during meiosis and it is an ascomycetes and thus yields complete tetrads for the genetic analysis in the laboratory. Next member that is Cryptococcus neoformans. It belongs to the order Trimelas, family Trimelasia and genus Cryptococcus and species Cryptococcus neoformans. It provides an excellent model for chronic infection and advantages of CN includes animal models including those for pulmonary, meningeal and latent infection. So to study meningitis and pulmonary infection this organism is used as a model. The availability of various monoclonal antibodies have also made it a suitable model organism. It provides an excellent model for chronic infection and advantageous. The availability of anti-idiotropic reagents that can be used to study the fate of labeled monoclonal antibodies. It is used as to understand the pathogenesis of any infection and further immune responses are being studied using this organism. It is an opportunistic human pathogen and constitutes the ideal organism to unravel the contributions of cellular aging. It helps us to study the virulence caused by chronic infections. We are coming to the community of true fungi that is Eumycota. Herein the first name that hits our mind is Kanigamala elegans. It belongs to the order Mucorales, family Kanigamalacea, genus Kanigamala and species Kanigamala elegans. Why it is chosen as a model organism? It is a harmless free living species but the other related nematodes are major parasites. It is very easy and simple to grow. It has got a very short life cycle approximately 3 days per generation. Then it has got a very powerful genetics both self fertile and cross fertile and it is transparent, small, invariant and fully described anatomy as development completely sequenced genome is available and it is really very useful in the studies of post genomic studies, especially in the studies of RNA interference. It is a ma model for mammalian drug metabolism means the effect of different drugs are being studied in Kanigamala elegans. It is also important to study the degradation of xenobiotics which is really a very important area 
of study nowadays. It is useful as it could reduce the overall need of model animals. So scientists are so happy with Kanegamala elegance that they are thinking that it may remove the importance of many model organisms, means it can replace them. The next member is called Ustilego medis. It is a dimorphic yeast and plant pathogen of maize. Ustilego medis is not only used to study plant diseases, but it also is used to study plant genetics. It led to the discovery of homologous recombination and DNA repair. Location is it belongs to the phylum Basidiomycota, class Ustilago mycetes, order Ustilagens, and genus Ustilago. The yeast like growth of Eumadis is exceptionally well studied for genetic modifications. Bracket fungi mainly comprises of mushrooms. So, the first name that hits our mind is Coprinus cinarius. It belongs to the class Agaricomycetes, order Agaricales, family Satharumrecelli, genus Coprinopsis, and species Coprinus cinarius. It is considered to be particularly suited organism to study meiosis due to synchronous meiotic development and prolonged prophase. So prolonged prophase is supposed to be the important property that is helpful in studying meiosis using Coprinus cinarius. It is used to study the genetics of mushroom development and also helps in fungal sex determination and to study various mating types. And it has also helped in understanding the evolution of multicellular fungi. Means evolutionary studies are being done extensively using Coprinus cinarius. And next is Schizophyllum commune. It is a model for mushroom formation. Model system for studying mating type gene function. Then we have biochemistry and enzymology is the focus of long search research using this Schizophyllum commune. In our today's lecture, what we have done, we have focused on the importance of fungi as a model organism. Why at all we need fungi? As because we have, uh, we know that bacteriophages can be model organisms, bacteria can be model organisms, but if we want to study the eukaryotic system, then fungus is supposed to be the best system to start the study. And that's why we have first divided it into its different classes and we have specifically highlighted on the different applications of this fungus in understanding the cell biology, in understanding the genetics, in understanding the molecular biology as well as its application in industry and in understanding the molecular aspects of transcription, translation, replication, cell cycle and not only that for developing different drugs and to check their effects on the various host cells can be done by studying fungus as model organisms. So this is what we have discussed today, thank you.